Hi, and welcome to the book bar where everything bookish is on the menu. I'm Ann Jeanette Barr, and here on my channel we do always talk about books, but in addition to being a book lover, I am also a writer, an editor, and an aspiring literary agent. Today is video number one of a new series that I'm going to call The Writer's Hour. Um, a lot of readers are also writers, and certainly a lot of readers are interested in writerly things, even if they haven't written something yet. So this series, which will not be consecutive, I'll just come on every once in a while and make a new video about writing, will be for you, for writers, authors, unpublished authors, and readers, just to get a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look at being an author. New writers just learning the ropes and looking for affirmation for their writing or maybe um, some analysis and critique of their writing to decide how they can improve often look to book contests or writing contests for that affirmation, mostly because they don't necessarily have a network of other writers um, to ask advice of or to offer their book to, to, to read and get feedback on, and also sometimes because writers are looking for um, some other kind of compensation than just selling their books, so some book contests offer nice rewards, and writers don't make very much, so it's another way to supplement your income. So today I want to talk about one contest in particular, or one group of contests, and that's the writing competitions from Writer's Digest magazine. They are offered annually, and they are there are multiple contests in several categories. Some are for self-published authors, some are for short stories, um, just a longer writing competition for anyone, or there are books in different categories for um, traditionally published authors as well. I've come across a range of opinions from writers about entering contests, and specifically the Writer's Digest content contests, and some of them are pretty vehement that it's not a good idea. I've even heard them called scams. Um, some writers love them and enter every contest they can, so today I wanted to just talk about the Writer's Digest contest and contests in general, and I hope that you find it helpful to hear a writer walk through some of these things. So I'm here at my desk in my studio gearing up for a very special month. April is Camp NaNoWriMo. Um, NaNoWriMo is always in November, and a lot of people will use that to draft a new novel from beginning to as far as they can get in November. The goal is 50,000 words, but April is a special time of year when you can go back to your book, if you haven't finished it yet, and do the rewriting necessary to turn it into something polished enough for the next step. So I am actually getting ready to print um, a manuscript that I wrote two NaNoWriMo's ago because 2020 was a dumpster fire, and I am going to um, use my developmental editing skills <laughs> to hopefully um, fix the little problems that it has in it. And that got me thinking about the last books that I wrote and published, which are nonfiction, and a collection of short stories. So in 2016, I wrote this book, Dinner at Home, Advice and Encouragement for the Untrained Home Cook, which is a food memoir slash reference book for people who are um, adults and having trouble adulting, <laughs> which was me, um, learning how to cook when you're an adult. And it's full of personal stories that are supposed to be funny and encouraging, and it was a blast to write. And then um, this kind of was my gateway into learning about the publishing industry, sorry there's a lot of glare there, and getting interested in all of the behind the scenes things that um, authors do. Um, I self-published this book so I learned just a ton along the way and then I ended up republishing it in 2018 because I learned so much during that process and afterward as I continued to study that I realized that I really could make this book better than it was and since I had self-published it, 
why not just do it? I have a video about that. It's several years old about why I republished my self-published book and I will link that. But when I wrote this book, I didn't plan on being an author. I think I wanted to, it was a dream, but it wasn't something I was working toward. This book was really a labor of love designed to help people in my immediate sphere of influence. I was, um, a resident manager at a transitional housing facility for families at risk for homelessness. And a lot of them really just didn't know what to do about the food we were giving them from the pantry or the food they were purchasing with their food stamps. And I was in charge of teaching a community living course to teach them all the sorts of things that they uh, might need to know to become independent. And this was part of the curricula. Um, but I've always loved writing, so this really just fed into a passion that I knew I had but hadn't really developed yet. So fast forward several years, I wrote for many websites, many other publications, helped with um, some other self-published books that were collaborations between authors, and did a lot of blogging on my own. I would have considered myself a professional blogger at one point. Um, and that was just a really fun learning period. My, I really improved my writing skills during that time and started to wonder if maybe I'd like to write some fiction. And I wrote and ended up publishing six short stories, more for myself than anything else, as an exercise in writing fiction and getting something out into the world that I could get feedback on. And again, it was a great experience. And since then, I've gone on to write a full novel, which is in draft third draft or something that I'm going to be working on in April, and um, a partial novel that I'm still working on. So um, I am an author of fiction and nonfiction, and now I have continued with my writing career and other branches of publishing with developmental editing and soon being a literary agent. The other job that I have had in the publishing world is that of a book contest judge. I made a whole video about my experience as a Writer's Digest magazine book contest judge. And to do that job, I really had to read a lot. I got interrupted. <gasps> Say hi. Hi. You gonna lay down? Okay. Like I was saying, to do that job, I had to read a lot and I had to quickly compile my thoughts for those authors into a 200 to 300 word um, critique or analysis of the books and then rank them and give them to the next round of judges with my top ones ranked. So um, I think I read, I, I, I said 175, is that how many it was total books as a contest judge. And that gave me a whole new insight into that side of entering contests. And so I wanted to talk a little bit today instead of about from that side, which I talked about in my last video, from the side of being a writer. Now that I have seen both sides and also have written more, I just want to talk through some of the things I've heard other writers say about writing and then specifically, like I said, whether the Writer's Digest contests are worth entering. So to start us off, I'll just reassure you, the Writer's Digest competitions are not scams. <laughs> um, they are definitely what they say they are. They are competitions. They do have a lot of entrance. They are competitive. The judges really are qualified and do a good job. Um, I'm not just tooting my own horn. I'm just talking about the judges in general. The, the selection process um, was thorough. And also the judges get paid. I mean, I didn't have any trouble ever. Clear communication with the company as both a writer and as a judge. So just rest, rest assured, it is not a scam. Um, I do understand why some people say it's not worth it, however. So I'm gonna talk first about um, what I liked about entering the Writer's Digest writing competitions. And then also maybe some things to think about when you're deciding if they are right for you. Because I am as yet a self-published author, I entered into the uh, annual self-publishing competition. Um, it's specifically called the Self-Published Book Awards, is what it's called. And I entered this book, like I said, in this copy, not the previous version. And I got some really great feedback. 
back from the judge. The competition fee at that time was I think $125. I'm not sure what it is now. It's been, you know, several years and of course they can change it at any time. And um, the reward would have been a few thousand dollars and recognition at the awards ceremony. And I was interested in the reward, but mostly interested in the feedback. Every writer who enters the competition, and I assume this is true for the other book competitions as well, receives feedback in the form of some ranked categories, one through five, how you did with various things like um, character development for fiction, you know, uh, organization, grammar and spelling, those sorts of things, and then a blurb of two to three hundred words uh, that focuses on things you did well, things you could improve, and they allow you to use that blurb for as an endorsement essentially, or as a addition to your reviews, or to put on the back of your next book, or to, to put on the back of a reprint. So that has a lot of value in my opinion. What I got back from my judge was entirely positive. I got high scores, I got a really lovely long paragraph about my book, which I then put, put right in my Amazon description for my book, and I'll link that below rather than reading it because I thought about reading it, but it is quite long. <laughs> and um, the judge summarized what my book was about br briefly and then just talked about the nice things about my book. I did not get back any constructive criticism. However, I think that has changed because when I became a judge, they specifically said writers really want to know, you know, what they can improve. So balance out your good feedback and your, not negative feedback, but your constructive criticism. And it sounded as if that was something that they were emphasizing anew with the year that I started judging until now. So regardless of the fact that I didn't find that I got any constructive criticism that I could use to then improve my, my book or my writing, I do think that anyone entering now would get that regardless of how good their book was. And also, to be honest, I just hadn't had many people read my writing. So to have someone praise it essentially was really important to me. And it did inspire me to continue on in a very kind of isolated path, whether it's a hobby or a career. I also entered one of the stories from this book uh, before I had compiled them into a book into the short story contest. That, that uh, fee was much smaller, $25 or something, so it didn't feel like much of a risk to me. And so it was more of, on my part, just something to commemorate the fact that I had written something. It was more like, I've done something, I can enter it, and so I will, and I didn't give it much more thought than that, so it didn't matter so much to me that nothing really came of it. Um, but there is no feedback for the short story competition. I'm not sure that there's any feedback for the writing competition. So you just have to read the, um, the descriptions of the competitions really well and know what you're getting from the money that you invest in it. I didn't win either of those competitions. I didn't go on to any other round. It was just, I entered, I got feedback in one case. I got, you know, a nice rejection, not rejection, but a nice, like, you didn't win, but great job for entering email in another case. Um, so that's where my experience as the writer stops. Uh, so before I go into maybe the negatives, I want to talk about some of the positives that I can imagine getting that maybe I didn't get, but from the judge's perspective, something that I think bears mentioning. If you do go on to the next levels of this contest, these contests from Writer's Digest, you get another set of eyes on your book, and also you have the opportunity to get into not just the top spot, but also the honorable mention spots that get listed on their website and in their magazine. And I will say that there were a few books that came to me as a judge that had were, had on the back description the fact that the author had won a previous year. And even if it wasn't um, Writer's Digest, say there was another kind of contest seal on the book or in the back matter or in the author bio, 
There is a kind of positive bias that it creates in readers and I think even in judges to know that the writer has received recognition before and I think that that is the number one thing that makes entering competitions worth it. If you get anywhere in the honorable mention or an award, it, it offers proof to the reader or to whoever it is that you need to offer proof to that someone else has deemed your work um, laudable, right? So while it didn't make me say, oh, well, if they won last year, this is going to be the one that I put forward. In fact, it didn't at all, and I'm not sure that I did put forward any of those that had won in previous years. I can't remember because it didn't play a conscious role in my decisions to who I advanced. Um, it did do another thing that I think happens to me as a reader in general, which is when I'm reading a book and I know that the author is um, a famous, admired person, especially a famous, admired writer, <laughs> Uh, that already has a lot of people who um, believe in them and, and I've heard positive things about them and I'm not enjoying the book as much. I have a tendency, my personality, to say to myself, well, I guess this just isn't the book for me, rather than this is a really bad writer or I don't like the way this person writes. It, does something psychologically to people, and I, I'm not the only one, um, that makes them decide that it could be a preference issue rather than a quality issue. Now, there are definitely people who just joy in leaving negative reviews, negative comments, or who are just very serious critics, and I don't just mean like they take themselves seriously, but they they have a lot of pride in being able to pick uh, the wheat from the chaff and so they will be more critical in their personality than I am. And those people, it's not going to matter so much to them whether you've won an award or not. In fact, they may ha hold you to a higher standard. But I don't think that that's the majority of people. I think that the majority of people are looking for good recommendations or are maybe giving writers the benefit of the doubt because they're not writers. And they are more likely to say, this is a really good writer, but I just don't really like this book. Or they're more willing to give a book a chance or say, hey, I didn't like this book, but maybe you'll like the book if you have some recognition, right? So even though I didn't get to experience that as a writer, as the judge and just as a reader, I think that is one of the biggest benefits of entering contests and potentially winning them is that if you get any kind of recognition from that at all, it kind of builds your portfolio and it builds your proof, like I said, your social proof that you have done something, you have gotten recognition, and then people expect that you will continue to perform. And I think you expect yourself to continue to perform well as well. So now to the negatives. Writers just don't make money, you guys. It takes a lot of work to make money as a writer um, of fiction or of books in general. And the writers who do make a lot of money are doing things for other writers a lot of times. They are ghost writing for other writers. They are editing for other writers. They are writing content for writers who don't have time to write all the content that they need to write for their websites, for instance. So while there's money to be made in the field of publishing or as a writer, it's not the people that we often think of as being wealthy or as having a good income. It may not be your favorite novelist. Your favorite novelist may have a great following and still not have a full-time income from writing. In fact, that's probably, that's really likely. So because writers don't make a lot of money, I think the critique of um, contests being a waste of time is a realistic critique. It's a person saying, hey, when you talk, you know, look through all the things you can do with your money and all the things you can do with your time and energy to succeed as a writer, to, to move forward as a writer to your next goal, entering a contest is not likely to give you the return on investment that some other things will. So, for instance, the only thing that entering the short story contest did for me was to convince me not to enter another short story contest. I mean, that's something. 
it also convinced me that I probably did need to continue to work on my craft, which I should have been convinced of anyway. So again, I didn't really need a contest to tell me you could be a better writer. Um, if I would have won that contest, I would have probably um, then have been challenged by, you know, imposter syndrome. Like I won it, but I'm sure that I was not that great. And I, if I had to present that story, I would have been a bundle of nerves. There's really no way out of just doing the hard work to become a better writer constantly, continuously, forever. Um, so sometimes we look for that affirmation along the way and sometimes it's good, but a lot of times it's not really going to get us um, further than just doing the work. So it is reasonable to skip entering contests. So if you haven't entered contests and you're feeling like, gosh, maybe I need that social proof, you don't. You really don't. You need to do the work. You need to keep writing. You need to keep becoming a better writer. And that social proof will come naturally from people finding and reading your book and being awed by it. So um, I don't think it's at all bad or wrong to enter in a contest, but I would say that for me, for now, in the future, entering a contest that doesn't give me any kind of feedback would not be worth the return on investment unless I for some reason thought I was just a shoe in and I was going to win this contest. So the other negative I think is that writing competitions are impersonal generally. Your judge is anonymous. You get some feedback, but you can't then go back and forth with your judge and say, but why did you say that? Or maybe if I changed this, would that have done that for, would that have fixed the issue for you? It's just a review, essentially, even if you get feedback. And a lot, oftentimes you don't. You don't get any feedback, you just get an award or you don't get an award. So because it's impersonal, I don't think that it can be something that is very impactful. I think it has to be part of a range of things you are doing as a writer to get feedback, to improve, and to find that affirmation that you need. So if you do decide to enter a contest, whether it be the Writer's Digest competition or another competition, I would say make sure you're still doing all the other things that are available to you as an author. Having friends critique your work or writing friends, not necessarily just a friend who's a reader, although that has its place. Usually having a writer look at your work is um, a little more profitable. Uh, hiring a developmental editor, hiring a, a copy editor afterward so that you can get a really good feel for whether you do have a good handle on grammar and syntax and spelling and punctuation and, you know, the things that matter on the small details. Um, making friends who are writers and networking with them and continuing to be inspired by them and also by reading their books. You've just got to continue investing in yourself in multiple ways. Don't enter a competition, hang on the results, and then decide that that is going to make or break whether you continue to write. Um, it's going to break it. You're not going to keep writing if you need that one piece of affirmation to go on. That being said, I hope you go back and watch my video about being a Writer's Digest book judge. <laughs> Writer's Digest writing competition book contest judge. I don't know. <laughs> um, because I enjoyed it so much for so many reasons and it was a privilege to read so many books and I do feel that the feedback that I gave those writers will be helpful to them. So I don't want to discourage you from entering this particular competition. In fact, I think that after you've watched this video and that video, if it sounds like you could be a good candidate for either winning the award or it's just the sort of feedback that you want, I'd say absolutely go for it. If you can afford the fee, I don't think that there uh, is a good reason not to, as long as you keep in mind that you've got to continue to invest in yourself as a writer in multiple different ways and that competitions are not everything, competitions are not necessary. So I hope this short conversation has been helpful. Do ask me questions in the comments if I didn't cover what you are wondering about the Writer's Digest competition from a writer's perspective or from a judge's perspective or if I can help you with either of my perspectives definitely ask comments. I will reply. We can keep the conversation going because I'm sure I didn't cover everything I 
imagined covering um, without a very strict outline here. Also leave me a comment if you've had any good experiences with other competitions. I would love to know what kind of contests you've entered. If you've won something, leave a link of your book and what you've won. I would love to have this space be um, safe for some self-promotion of um, books and, and competitions that relate to the topic. So it is fine to go ahead and put those things in the links of this video. And if you're just a reader who is interested in this and reading along, leave me a comment, tell me what you're reading, and everybody, please leave me a comment and tell me what's in your cup. <laughs>